I'm Joel Bogus. I'm the host of The Relaunch Show. And about 25 years ago, I started behind the mic in traditional radio, and I was also in front of the camera on television. And from the time I got into this, to the studio for the very first time, boy, I was hooked. It was just something that, that I just had to do. And when podcasting started to kind of peek its head over the horizon, I knew that I needed to be in, in that industry. And we've just been having a blast with the relaunch show recently passed uh, a million downloads, which to me, that's a big number. And uh, gosh, Huffington Post mentioned us as being one of the top five inspirational podcasts and um, Inc. Magazine on their website even put us as one of the top 20 business podcasts of 2015. And that's, that's huge. I interviewed uh, Matthew Pollard on uh, my show, gosh, I don't know, three, four, maybe even five months ago, pretty close to it anyways. And we, we got to talking, as we typically do, a post-interview chat on the show, and he talked about the Small Business Festival and his, his involvement with it. And one thing led to another, and pretty much within that conversation, because we had formed a quick friendship, which uh, being interviewed on a podcast typically does that, and he... Uh, pretty much rolled out the red carpet for me, Matthew did. And as the Small Business Festival started getting closer, that's when I really started to realize how, how involved he was in the project, the Small Business Festival project, and how big his vision was and everything that was involved in, in the Small Business Festival. And I got here a day early. I always like to show up you know, at least a day early to events that I'm going to or, or speaking at. And it, it was amazing. Things were running like clockwork. There were um, speakers getting ready to take the stage. There, were, there was production staff. They, they all knew what they were doing. And then there were volunteers showing up to, to run errands, to make, thing, make sure everything ran smoothly. And I, I was just impressed right from the start. I was, I was honored when Matthew originally uh, invited me, but since I've been here, it has just been phenomenal. And every single person that I've met that is connected with the SBF has been amazing. Without a doubt, every, every business should have a podcast, but I think a stumbling block that a lot of people kind of trip over is that they think, of, they think okay, I know I should have a podcast, but I don't know what to podcast on. It's a common question. A lot of people have them. And there, it it's actually has a simple answer to it. You as an entrepreneur, because you know your business, you know your industry, and you know the challenges that your customers face, well, what you can do is you can take the top 10 questions, top 10 challenges that people face, and that could be your first 10 episodes. Just answering the questions that people often ask you. And, and here's the cool thing about this idea is that they don't even have to ask them of you. I mean, these can just be questions that people ask on social media, in discussion forums. And what you can do is just take those questions and add your own spin, add your own answer, add your own solution to them. And that starts making you the authority on that particular subject. And what's beautiful about it is you can repurpose those shows and those answers over and over and over again. I remember I uh, worked with a coach uh, right at the beginning of my, my podcasting uh, journey, my very first podcast coach. And I'm pretty much the poster boy for ADD. And with that, I would uh, hit him with a barrage of questions covering a diversity of issues. And so what he did, something very smart, instead of spending 10, 15, 20 minutes writing out an email, 10, 15, 20 minutes that he wasn't getting paid for, Instead of spending that time, what he did is he nurtured the relationship. He got back to me with a, a quick note, but he also referred me to the podcast that had the answer in it that I was looking for. So he nurtured our relationship, kept that communication going, but he also honored his time. And that's something as entrepreneurs that we all need to do is learn how to honor our time. And that's something that worked wonders for him. And you can do the same as an entrepreneur. 
you can refer people to your audio library. You can use your shows as material content that you're emailing out as a newsletter. You can put it on social media. You can just add it as a nice touch to another touch point that you have in the um, customer relationship cycle. Yeah, Pay and I uh, love dogs, and I've personally always had dogs throughout my life, but this is the first experience for her. And we've had our two golden retrievers, Bubba and Jake, for about 11 years. And we had them trained as therapy dogs, so we used to take them out and, gosh, we'd go to retirement homes, we'd go visit blind children, autistic kids, and we'd have so much fun uh, doing that. And they're retired from that now, but we used to take them out and uh, you know, walk our dogs in our spare time. We just recently lost one of our dogs about two months ago uh, to cancer. So we're spending as much time with uh, Bubba, which is the one that we have left, as much time as possible. Another thing I enjoy doing is I, I work out uh, often. I was a personal trainer uh, when I was in graduate school, and uh, that, that's just kind of stuck with me. So I try to get to uh, my, my gym you know, three, four times a week.